we're going to move on to our next lecture on points, paths, and text effects. I want to kind of introduce this though because I'm re-recording all of the lectures for the R1200 class, um, mostly because I decided to divide the old module into two different modules. And in the past, uh, we would do two projects when we talked about this module. We would do a points and paths activity where you have to recreate a supplied sample so that you can make purposeful decisions on where anchor points go and get the lines to go where they're supposed to. Um, and then we would also do a four-page newsletter. And so if I slip up and I mention that newsletter uh, in any of my videos, maybe I left an old video somewhere, I just want to point out that we are going to still do a four-page newsletter, but as of the fall 2017 semester, uh, moving forward, we've moved that to the end of the semester. Um, because we're going to require more cool things out of you than, than a basic newsletter. We're going to have you do um, styles, which is something we haven't really covered thoroughly in the past, and I think it's important, so we're going to try to cover styles in more depth, but there's a lot of stuff we have to do before we can understand styles, and so for that reason, we're pushing that back um, to the end of the semester. But we're still going to talk about points, paths, and text effects, because I think that you can use them for your projects moving forward. And so uh, when we get to the text part of the lecture, make sure that you kind of make a mental note that it's not a requirement for the project you're working on right now, but you'll need to reference it. And so you might need to come back and rewatch these videos uh, when it's time to make that newsletter. So let's get started. Let's jump in. So this lecture corresponds to chapter 7 and 9 in your textbook. At this point, the textbook is recommended because the publisher has not updated it in several years, and you're probably sick of me saying this. Um, I still really like the textbook. I think it's good as kind of like a reference if you need um, to look up how do you make a table or how do you add something to your project. Um, most of your knowledge will come from these videos, but it's a good resource, and so I don't want to claim that I've organized this content in, in this way magically. I'm following the textbook that's recommended for the class. So let's cover chapter 7 first, that's on points and paths. Our objectives for today are to understand what vector art is, and also to understand that you're going to create vector art in InDesign, but we're not taking an Illustrator class. Illustrator uh, software is the software application made by Adobe that's really best for creating complex vector arts, and we're going to kind of give you a little introduction into what that is and so that you can create some basic vector art in InDesign but you're gonna hit a wall when you start to create stuff in InDesign you're gonna say well I can create some basic stuff but I'm not creating things the way that I would really want to create them and when you hit that wall and you say but I want to do more that's when you'll kinda of jump to Illustrator software we will learn about vector art by practicing how to make some vector art in InDesign you've already created some vector art in our class if you're creating text or shapes or things like that, that's all made out of vector art. In addition, we'll draw lines with the line tool. I'll show you the pen and the pencil tool a little bit. Um, I'll show you how to modify anchor points. We will practice adding and deleting anchor points, moving them around if we need to. Um, I'll show you the difference between an open and a closed path and how to convert to one or the other if you need it. Uh, we can change the path direction. We can do a bunch of of really cool things and one thing that's not in the slideshow that I am going to show in the video is how to take your text and convert it from text which is editable like you can change the words and make it a shape because sometimes making it a shape is actually more beneficial to you than having it be editable as text and so let's let's jump in let's get started so first what is vector art images made from mathematical formulas are considered to be vector art the mathematical formulas are represented by anchor points and directional lines, as you can see in my illustration here. And vector art is, is vector art is resolution independent. And so a lot of times when we talk about resolution, we talk about image quality, and we talk about images that have these things called pixels, like you would see in Photoshop. But it's important to know that resolution only affects images with pixels. And so if you have an image that's made out of something that's not pixels, then it's resolution independent. And because vector art has no pixels, it's made up of anchor points and directional lines, it is resolution independent. It can be made bigger or smaller, and I see there's a typo on my slide here. They can be made bigger or smaller, and it will not have any image quality loss. And so I could take something that's three inches wide and stretch it and make it 300 inches wide to put on the side of a building, and I would not have any image quality loss. Let's stay on this slide for a second. So the way that the anchor points and the directional lines work is that you have an anchor point that acknowledges some sort of change in the path that you're creating. And so the line that you're creating is called a path, and you can add color to that line called a stroke. Um, when you create your artwork um, out of 
vector out, you'll have those anchor points that kind of say something is going to change at these points. The directional lines, the things that are highlighted in yellow on the screen here, they control the curves. And so if you have no directional lines, you have no curves. And so you could have a square. A square can have anchor points, one in each corner, to form the shape of the square. But it would have no directional lines because there's no curves in that. But if you're making a circle, let's say, you would have maybe two or four anchor points to create that shape. And then you would have directional lines that are pulled out from the anchor points that control the curve. Uh, one thing that I want to point out is that you always have a, a directional line for the path that comes into the anchor point and then a different directional line for the path that comes out of the anchor point. And so right now I have the center anchor point selected so you're only seeing the directional lines for the center. And I have a directional line, sometimes people will refer to them as handlebars. I'm pulling it out to the top left hand side here. This top uh, handlebar or directional line is controlling the curve that goes back to the first anchor point. And then the bottom handlebar or directional line is controlling the curve that leaves the anchor point going towards the third uh, anchor point. And if I selected the first anchor point you would see any curves or um, directional lines that are attached to that as well. It's important to note that because you could have a curve come into an anchor point and then you could have no directional line going out and it can create a hard edge to your shape if that's what you're trying to create. There are a couple different tools in InDesign that we're going to focus on in this lecture for creating your uh, vector art. The first is the line tool and it allows you to make straight lines. They can be vertical or horizontal. They can be on an angle, any angle you want, but they are straight. Um, there's a straight line from point A to point B and when you use that line tool, it's on your tools panel, you're simply going to click and drag and where you click is the beginning of your line and wherever you let go is the end of your line. It will have two anchor points, one on the beginning and one on the end, and there will be no directional lines because there's no curves to a straight line. After you make a line or a path, you have the ability to put a stroke on that, which is the outline or the border color of something. And so you can launch the strokes panel and you can play around with that if you want. Um, when you are experimenting with the strokes panel, the very first thing that I would recommend is increasing the weight. The weight is the thickness of the stroke. And so if you have a one point stroke, it's pretty thin. But if you have a 20 point stroke, it's really fat and you can see where the border or the stroke is on your color, or, or sorry, on your path. The other two tools that I'm specifically going to demo in this lecture are the pen tool and the pencil tool. And I didn't include the pencil tool in the lecture because in general I think the pencil tool is a bad idea. But I actually think it's a good idea for this lecture when you're first getting started because you can draw things with it um, that you couldn't draw unless you know how to use the pen tool very well. And so I'm going to jump back to InDesign and I'm going to show you how to use the line tool and the pencil tool. When we come back we'll talk more about the pen tool. And so in order to get started, let's go ahead and create a new document. You can make it whatever size you want. If you're looking at the project, you can make it whatever size the project should be. I'm going to make mine 8 inches by 10 inches with 0.25 inch margins and standard printing bleeds of 0.125 inches. I'm also going to reset my workspace because I must have been working on something else recently. And now we're back to defaults. The first tool that you can use, or we've already used these tools to make uh, vector art, are your shape tools. So you can use the rectangle, the ellipse, or the polygon tool. And we've already learned those, so I'm not going to specifically focus on them just now. The new tools that we're going to use are the line tool, the pen tool, and the pencil tool. Where did they hide the pencil tool? There we go, pencil tool. Uh, the line tool is fun because it makes straight lines. So I clicked. And now I'm dragging, and wherever I let go, I will have a line. And so this is good if you need to make shapes that have straight edges, but notice that they don't connect. Even if I try really hard to make it appear that they connect, they do not connect unless I do something else to make them connect, so keep that in mind. I'll get a lot of students that will say, well, I want to fill in this triangle. Right? That looks like a triangle to you, right? I want to put pink in it, right? And so I go to the fill. I do everything right. I select the triangle, air quote triangle. I go to the color picker and double click and I find a pink color. And I select OK and I, f I change the fill. I confirm I change the fill because I can see the fill color is purple. But you don't actually get a fill color. That's because this line 
is black with a fill of purple, but there's no fill, it's just a line. And the same applies to the other two lines. And so if you're trying to make a shape that has a fill color, you don't want to use that line tool. Before we move on from the line tool, I want to open the strokes panel and show you some things you can do on there. Uh, strokes panel is pretty fun. So you can select the, the oh, that was kind of fun. Um, you can select the line and on the strokes panel or even on your control bar up here at the top of the screen. So I have the black mouse or the selection tool selected and if I select my stroke you'll see that I get all these different options if we scroll across here for making changes to that stroke. Most of them come directly from the strokes panel and so I can increase the weight which is the fatness or the thickness of the stroke. You can change the end of the cap or the end of the line. You can make it rounded or you could make it uh, rectangular extended and what that means is that your line actually ends back here but now you want to have extra color on the edge of it. You can change different things like that. Um, you can change the joint but it doesn't have any joints. The joints is where two lines come together and so you could round the joint if you had a joint but you don't have it. You can also choose to align the stroke to the path and so when you align the stroke to the path here, this first option is saying that if I have a 10 point stroke, I want half of it on the inside of the stroke and half of it on the outside. If I change it to the second option, it all goes to the inside and so it bounces to one side. And then if I choose the last option, it goes to the outside of the stroke and it aligns the outside. This really doesn't have a lot of impact when you're working with a line, but if you had a shape like a circle, let's go make a circle. Let's give it a color and let's give it a stroke. Let's make the stroke really fat. Right now, can you see, let's make the stroke a different color than blue. Okay, if you can see, the blue line is the edge of, I need to switch to my black mouse here. The blue line is the edge of my circle. And you can see that the pink stroke is really fat right now. It is 13 points thick. Let's go down. It's 13 points thick, and so let's make it 14. So seven points are going on the outside of the circle, and seven points thickness is going on the inside. If you change the align stroke option to the inside, the whole stroke will go on the inside, and it creates a different look. The whole circle looks smaller. Or if you choose the third option, it all goes on the outside, and so now the stroke looks bigger. And there is no right or wrong answer to this. It's just what is the option that you're looking for. And so keep that in mind. This is especially important when you're working with text. Okay, let's clear that off and before I end this video and start the next one, I want to talk about the pencil tool. And so it's on your tools panel, about, I don't know, a third to half of the way down. It's directly under the pen tool, which kind of looks like a fountain. And it should be, please ignore that sound, it's the printer in the classroom waking up to clean the print heads. Um, it should be on the top, it should just be there, but if it's not, you can push and hold. And if the eraser is there, you can switch from the eraser back to the pencil. What's fun about the pencil tool is that without any really experience with using the pen tool, which can be more difficult, you can just draw as if you're using a pencil. So you can click and you can draw a pattern. And when you let go, you will have whatever shape you just created. You can increase the weight of it. You can change the color of it. You can change the fill color and you can do funky things. It's not the best tool because it's kind of free form and when you're working with vector art and when you take your illustrator class you'll learn that you want to have the least number of anchor points um, that are absolutely necessary for whatever you're creating and so when I use the pen tool and I try to create a line I tried to create a straight line I didn't do such a great job but if I look really closely at it it has one two three that one's not an anchor point Four. No, that might be an anchor point. No, it's a halfway point. I have four anchor points in this shape. But if I use a line tool, I just have two. I have one on either end. The one in the middle doesn't count. It's just a halfway point. And so I would want a line that has the least number of anchor points possible. But for where we're at in the semester, that, that's okay when you're kind of experimenting. What I would like you to use for the project that you're working on with this module is the pen tool, and we'll cover that in the next video.